The Ox Cart Man by Donald Hall with pictures by Barbara Cooney. In October, he backed his ox into his cart and he and his family filled it up with everything they made or grew all year long that was left over. He packed a bag of wool he sheared from the sheep in April. He packed a shawl his wife wove on a loom from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from sheep sheared in April. He packed five pairs of mittens his daughter knit from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from the sheep sheared in April. He packed candles the family made. He packed linen made from flax that they grew. He packed shingles he split himself. He packed birch brooms his son carved with a borrowed kitchen knife. He packed potatoes they dug from their garden. But first he counted out enough potatoes for the winter and potatoes for seed for next spring. He packed a barrel of apples, honey and honeycomb, turnips and cabbages, a wooden box of maple sugar from the maples they tapped in March when they boiled and boiled the sap away. He packed a bag of goose feathers that his children collected in the barnyard from the barnyard geese. When his cart was full, he waved goodbye to his wife, his daughter, and his son, and he walked at his ox's head for 10 days, over hills, through valleys, by streams, past farms and villages, until he came to Portsmouth and Portsmouth Market. He sold the bag of wool. He sold the shawl his wife made. He sold the five pairs of mittens. He sold candles and shingles. He sold birch brooms. He sold potatoes. He sold apples. He sold honey and honeycomb, turnips and cabbage. He sold maple sugar, also known as maple syrup. He sold a bag of goose feathers. Then he sold the wooden box he carried the maple sugar in. Then he sold the barrel he carried the apples in. Then he sold the bag he carried the potatoes in. And then he sold his ox cart. And then he sold his ox and kissed him goodbye on the nose. Then he sold his ox's yoke and harness. With his pockets full of coins, he walked through Portsmouth Market. He bought an iron kettle to hang over the fire at home. And for his daughter, he bought an embroidery needle that came from a boat in the harbor that had sailed all the way from England. And for his son, he bought a barlow knife for carving birch brooms with. And for the whole family, he bought two pounds of wintergreen peppermint candies. Yum. Then he walked home with the needle and the knife and the wintergreen peppermint candies tucked into the kettle and a stick over his shoulder stuck through the kettle's handle and coins still in his pocket. He didn't spend all his money. Past farms and villages, over hills, through valleys, by streams, until he came to his farm and his son, his daughter, and his wife were waiting for him. And his daughter took her needle and she began stitching. And his son took his barlow knife and he began whittling and they cooked dinner in their new kettle. And afterward, everyone ate a wintergreen peppermint candy. And that night, the ox cart man sat in front of his fire, stitching a new harness for the young ox in the barn. And he carved a new yoke and sawed planks for a new cart and split shingles all winter. While his wife, turned flax into linen all winter, and his daughter embroidered linen all winter, and his son carved brooms from birch all winter, and everybody made candles. And in March, they tapped the sugar maple trees and boiled the sap down to make maple syrup. And in April, they sheared the sheep, spun the yarn, and wove and knitted. 
And in May, they planted potatoes, turnips, and cabbages, while apple blossoms bloomed and fell, while bees woke up starting to make new honey. And geese squawked in the barnyard, dropping feathers as soft as clouds. I chose this book for the theme of gratitude because I wanted to demonstrate a family that really uh, is grateful for the life that they have. Being grateful doesn't mean you only appreciate the big things that are happening in your life. Being grateful means that you appreciate the little things, the things that you cherish every single day. And this ox cart man seems to cherish his family, his children, his wife, his job, his uh, farm animals, his walks, the way that he goes to work, the way that he comes back what he makes, he cherishes uh, what, he, what he's able to create with his hands, the candles and the, and the planks and the ox cart and the shingles. Like his family appreciates the little things. They are grateful for the little things. And it's with gratitude for the little things that transforms you into really feeling good. If we want some sort of antidote for unhappiness, the best thing to do, the first thing you should do is to write down, make a list of all the things that you're grateful for in your life. Top five. So they don't have to be big. It doesn't have to be, I'm grateful for a big mansion that I live in. No. You'd say, I'm grateful that I live in a home. I'm grateful for my sisters, for my mom. I'm grateful for going to school. I'm grateful that I have two hands that I can use to draw and make things with. I'm grateful that I can see. I'm grateful that I have taste buds and I can taste wonderful food and try new things. I'm grateful that I'm healthy. I'm grateful just to be alive. Okay, so when we make a list of things that we're grateful for, we actually feel better about ourselves. Our happiness goes up. So boys and girls, next time you're having a bad day, I want you to practice gratitude. Make a list of your top five things that you are grateful for. Little things, little things. Again, it could be, I'm grateful for the trees outside. I'm grateful for my dog. I'm grateful for anything. Anything that brings you joy, you are grateful for. So make a list of your five top things. Read it and then go to sleep. And I'm Betcha. But the next morning when you wake up, you're going to feel much better than you did the day before. So go practice gratitude.